Hello and welcome to a Flask tutorial in Python. So what Flask is, um, it's a Python web framework, uh, similar to Django, but it's much easier. And in some cases it can be more useful than other things. So, um, yeah, so uh, I've already created a folder here called Flask Tutorial. It's in the same place where I put my Django thing. But I already created a folder called Flask Tutorial and you can name it whatever you want. So you want to get into that folder, and immediately you're going to create two things called templates. This is a folder, and another folder called static. Okay, and you'll understand why we need those later. Uh, you don't have to do anything with them right now. But uh, next what you want to do is create a Python file, and you want to save it there. So let's go there. Um, users and there's that last tutorial and we're going to call this flask underscore app dot py okay just to just check quick check in your folder you should have <coughs> two empty folders um one of them should be called static another one called templates and a python uh thing right here okay so the first thing you need to do uh you need to get into your python code and what we're going to do is create our first basic app, which is just going to say, hello, this is our first Flask web page. So how do you do that? First thing you need to do is take something from the Flask module. So you're going to say from Flask import capital F Flask. What this capital F Flask is, it's a class within the module Flask. And um, this will just create your app. And so the first thing we have to do after our import statement is create an app of the flask class it's rhyming a lot um so this is a so we're just creating our app now um so th this line you're always going to need no matter what and uh yeah so this is the name of our app we could change that to so anything else we want but usually we put a uh, app that's a convention okay so now that you got those two out of the way now we're gonna uh create our function which will show what the user wants to see and we're also going to route it to a URL. So in Django, we had to go through all these different files, different Python files to actually make this. And in Flask, we can do it all in a matter of a few lines. So first, what we need to do is route it to a URL. The way we do that is at app.route. It's app, uh, whatever the name of this is. Uh, I called it app, so I'm going to put app here app.route and then whatever your what you want your URL to be. So if I if I want mine just to be like the normal, then I can just put this within these. Or if I wanted something else, I could put slash hello slash by I don't know so anything like that. But we're just gonna leave it like this for now. We can toy around at that later. And next thing you want to do is create your function. So much like Django, we're going to have our function, and I'm just going to call it index. But unlike Django, uh, we don't need a parameter in here. Usually we have, in Django, we have a necessary request parameter, but we don't need that here. So we can just leave it as is. And then we're instead of putting that like HTTP response stuff, we don't need to do that at all. All we need to do is say a return, and then whatever we want to return. So I can say, hello, this is our first Flask web page. Okay, and let's just do that quickly. Let's go to, is it 127? No, no. See, we actually don't want that. If we go right here, huh, let's see. Actually, I need to... Well, let me just fix this really quick. Okay, so I just made a mistake that I make all the time. Um, because I usually work online, so I don't have to do this. But if you want to actually run your app, you have to put this statement here. If underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals main. And you're going to see this a lot in code. App dot run. What this is saying is that if this, if the file that we're running is the main file, then run it.
but if this file is not the main file, then don't run it. Um, usually this will return true, but uh, for this case you have to say that. Um, you don't need to worry too much about this statement. Uh, you can, you just need to put that after everything. And between this app.run, you can say debug equals true. If you want, you don't have to. But if we do, and we save that and run the module, I'll say restarting with stat. And let's see. Taking a bit of time here. Let me just remove debug equals true. Run it now, restart with stat. Okay, there we go. Running on this. So if we copy that, paste it, which is the same thing we're just on, it'll say, hello, this is our first class web page. If you remember how long it took us to do it with Django or Django, and now how simple it is to do it with Flask, you'll see why a lot of people prefer Flask. Um, okay, now let's just uh, toy around it a bit. So I was talking to you about the URLs and how you can do different things with them. Um, if we want, we can say slash hello. I'm just giving some examples here. And if we do that now, uh, oops. And then if we go to that website again, actually, hold on. Back to, oh wait, I need to run it, yeah. Um, let's run that. Okay, now it's running. You know, 5,000. Now, if we go to 5,000, it'll say not found. The requested URL is not found, blah, blah, blah. The reason why, well, I mean, it, actually, let, just see for yourself. If we do 5,000 slash hello, now it'll come up. And that's what this URL is. So this URL, we're just defining this part of it. The part before is already predetermined. So when I put just this, that means that it's just 127.0.1, uh, 5,000. But... Otherwise, we can say like slash hello, we can say a lot of, we can say anything we want really, and that will work out. Okay, so now let's do some other stuff. Alright, let's play a little bit more with URLs. So what if we wanted our text to change depending on what the URL is, as a lot of websites are like? Well, then we can do something special within this app.route here. We can say slash, and then within two signs like that, we can put in the value. So what I'm going to say is um, age, similar to what we did in our other thing. So, and then in this index function, we're going to take in a parameter age. This age parameter is the same thing up here. So what we're saying is that the user will type in this and then slash and then they're gonna type in something and you and then I want you to take that and input it into index and then use it as you want to use it so I'm gonna say hello you are um, plus age plus years old okay and let us run that there we go so if we go here, I mean, here yeah, it says, hello, you are hello years old. Um, but let's say 94, hello, you are 94 years old. 48, hello, you are 48 years old. 82, hello, you are 82 years old. 7, hello, you are 7 years old. And this also works with strings. If I could say, hello, I'm dead. Hello, you're I'm dead years old. Um, yeah, so that's how you can take some user input there in the URL. And, uh, okay, let's see what else we can do. Now this, in my opinion, looks pretty bland. I mean, like, look at, look at the style of the text. It just doesn't look that good. So what can we do to fix that? Well, let's just say, let's just do the same thing as before. Let's just say hello. This is my first last web page. Um, so if we're to run this, well, I mean, you already saw it happens. Let's say we want to change this and we want to create it as a heading. Then we can actually run HTML within here. 
This is not how it's preferred to do it, but we can do it like this. So we can say return, and then let's say h1, and then at the end here, ending h1 tag. Uh, this is some HTML if you didn't know. And we run the module, and now we can see, take this all out. Um, let's I put it in correctly. It's taking a while to load. Is there something wrong? Let's see. Or let me just do that again. And, uh, okay, let's just take that out. Error in the application. Alright, let's see what we did wrong. Um, let's run that now. I'll see. Let's run it. It's still an error. Okay. I don't, where did I mess up? Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was wondering, because sometimes I mix this HTML thing up right here. Uh, I was fine. Uh, the problem was that I was taking a input right here to the function, but I actually didn't need to, or I'm not supposed to, actually. So now if we run it, and we do it, you'll see that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, it is a heading as defined here by HTML. Now. I said before that it's preferable not to do HTML this way, and this is why. In Flask, you can actually, well, in Flask and Django, you can actually render HTML files. So instead of writing your HTML here, you can write it in an actual HTML file and then just take that and put it here. So in order to do that, we need to import something else called render template. And this is why I made you create this templates directory. In here, you're going to create some HTML files. So let's just create a new a new file. Um, let's call it uh, test. Um, yeah, let's just change it. Uh, CDN, CD flask, the temp. Um, move test.txt test.html. There you go, it's a Chrome HTML document. I, um, here you go, I have brackets right here. Uh, okay, there we go. So here we can code with some HTML. Um, so yeah, let's just do something basic like let's just, just declare the doc type. No, HTML, uh, let's see, head, title, um, flask, I don't know, something like that. Um, let's create the body, and let's just write h1, hello, this is our Flask web page, and then take this stuff out. I don't like it in this format, but uh, what are you gonna do? Okay, let's save that. Um, all right. Now what we can do is, in here, we can define index. We can instead of returning that h1, all that stuff we did, we can say return render template. And then within here, we're going to say what we want to render. So I want to render test.html. And uh, that's what it's going to do. Now, you might be wondering why I put this templates directory and whether or not Flask will get confused. Well, once you say render template, it'll automatically look for a directory called templates and go in there and then search for this file. So that's why you have to name it templates, not anything else. So now if we run it... Okay, see it looks the same except, um, actually you can't see right now, but you see the there's the title there is now Flask, which I did in the HTML, and uh, yeah, that's 
pretty useful. So instead of writing all your like HTML here, it might look very bad. So it's best just to write it elsewhere and then just put it in there. Okay, speaking of HTML, there's something special you can do with HTML with Flask and Django. It's called Jinja. What that is, um, it's like you can code some Python within your HTML. And it's pretty useful. And I'll show you an application right here. So if I wanted to say, um, let's say I want to say hello and then your name. Uh, the way I would do that is let's go into the Flask app. Let's just, and let, let's put in something here called name. So the user will enter a name. And then as a, in, as a parameter, we'll put a name. And then we're going to say return, yeah, render template test.html. And we're going to put in another parameter called name equals name. So what we're doing here is we're taking the name in our Python file and we're sending that data to the HTML file. So what we can do here is normally we would just write something like, you'd write it like h1 hello, um, or, you know, we, we, we would just write something like hello, hello plus name. Or you know, something like that. Um, and what we can do is, like, we can actually take information from here and put it in here. So, how do we do that? Well, if we, I just want to say hello, name, and then exclamation mark, exclamation mark, not park, you can say hello. And then within two curly braces in the middle, you're going to write name. Name is the variable that we just passed in here. So, let me bring this out yeah as you can see here hello name right here we said name equals name so we're taking the name in the python file which is what the user is going to input in the url right here and we're taking it and we're turning that data into the html file so now html knows that name is equal to whatever that is so the way we pass variables into html is by putting it within two curly braces and this is called Jinja, I don't know, Jinja language, I have no idea. But it comes with Flask. So if we do that here and we save this and we run the module. And let's go here, let's put um, slash Billy. Hello, Billy. Uh, Bob, hello, Bob. Um, I don't know. Lahesicles, hello, Isiclis. Um, we can put in a lot of stuff. So, and that that's how it works. So, hopefully, you understand that part. Right here, we're just passing in a variable from um Python into this HTML here by putting it within two curly braces. Now, this isn't the only Jinja logic you can use. Um, you can do other stuff too. So, for example, if you wanted to run actual Python, now the Python you can run within HTML with Jinja is very limited. Um, you can use like if statements, for statements, things like that. But if you wanted to do that, then there's an easy way to do it. So, if you want to run like those kind of statements, if you want to write like a logical statement, not a variable statement, but a logical one. Then you'd put two curly braces. Within those two, you'd put two percent signs. And then in the middle, you would write your code. So I can say, you know, here, let me just, um, let me come right here. Uh, what? Oops. I have paint open. Uh, I believe, let me just make sure. I actually haven't done this for a long time. So let me make sure I have this right. If I were to say name equals a list of like Billy, or yeah, okay, Billy, Bob, and um, I hit so whatever I wrote there. And if I were to say name equals name, I believe this will work. I'm actually not sure, but I can say for name in name, or you know, let's just say 
for n in name. And then here I'm going to put h1 hello n. Uh, and then I'm going to break like that. And when you're doing these logical statements within HTML with Jinja, you actually have to end it. You have to specifically end it. So you have to write end for if I'm doing a for loop. Or if I'm doing an if statement, I have to say end if and things like that. So let's say control S. And hopefully this works. Okay. There we go, it did work. Okay, so what we did here was we um, we took this list of um, names, Billy, Bob, and Isixil, and then we passed it into our HTML. And using Jinja logic within these curly braces and percent size, we, we did a just normal Python you know, code for n in name, so I'll assign n to every element in this list, and then it'll say hello n, and then we have to specifically end that for loop because that's how Jinja works. Okay, so that was pretty nice. Um, let's let's do something a little more interesting. Let's do forms. Um, <coughs> so forms. Uh, you can create the form using HTML and then just pass in the data with Flask and I'll show you how to do that. So what, actually, you know, here, let me explain something first. So when you're doing that, when you're giving this code to the web page, there are two ways that the web page can process the data that you're passing. You can either use get that's the name of one method of processing data, or I can use post, which is another method of processing data. And most of the time it'll use get, but sometimes you want to use post, which is when you want to like retrieve data that entered by the user. So um, the default uh, way a web page will take in your data is by using a get method. And you can research more about these methods later. I'm just explaining these basics. So it'll usually use a get method, but when you're doing something like creating a form where you want to take in the data that the user entered, you have to use the post method. Now, how do we do that? Here, next to that app.route, we have to put another parameter called methods. And in methods, we need a list. And this list will have uh, two components. The first one will be get, second one will be post. So what we're saying is that this URL can take in a get method and a post method. Normally it's only a get method, but we're adding post here manually like this. Okay, so now that, that's just the basics of that. Now let's just create a form. So let me just change this to form. Um, let's ask, um, name and age. So I'm going to create a form. The action will be the link, which I'm going to assign as slash form. And then the method will equal post. Now, if you don't know how to do um, like this HTML, I'm assuming you do. But if you don't, then you should probably learn to do so. It's not actually that difficult. But um, let me just change this to form so it matches over here. You see here we put slash form here. We need, also need slash form. So um, we're creating a method equals post. That's what I explained. So I'm, so what we're saying here is that when the browser looks at this form, we're saying that when the user enters their data, use a post method to take in the data. Okay, now within this form, we want to create two inputs. Actually, let's first just say enter your name and age. Okay, let's break, I'm um, say input, um, name equals, well, name, because that's what they're putting in here. Input name equals age. And then input, if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, I'll explain it here in a second. Input name equal, or here, 
type equals submit value equals submit. Okay, so what I'm doing here is first I'm just creating a big heading like this that says enter your name and age. Then this, this BR means that it'll come to the next line, it'll break a line. As usually it just runs everything on the same line, but this means that it'll like go come down to the next line. So this first thing here is an input, and this uh, input is by default is just a text entry. And what this means here, name equals name, that means that whatever they type in to the entry, assign that to the variable name. So name equals name might sound weird, but name just pretty much means a variable. And we're going to store whatever's put into that entry into the variable name. And for the next one, we're going to say store whatever's put into that entry into the variable age. And then after that, we're going to put in a button or actually it's a submit button, that's a special button, um, and the value goes submit. Okay, so this is our basic form. It's just gonna, actually you not. Know, let's just run that here so you can, you can see it. Um, let's just say return render template, what's it called? Test.html. It's just so you can see uh, uh, what, what we're doing here. Let's go to slash form, and here we go. So um, you're not understanding what brackets here. We have a header, right? We have an input, which is this, and that whatever's entered there will be stored into a name. Whatever's entered here will be stored into age, and then we have a submit button right here. All right, so now we're done with this HTML. Now is now it's time to do some stuff with this. So the first thing we need to do is import something else called request. And this is used in Django as well. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking what method the web browser is using to process this data. So if it's using a post method, that means that the user has entered their uh, answers for the form. If it's still using a get method, then that means that the user has not yet entered their uh, their data and they still need time to look at the form. So how do we do that? We can use an if statement and if request.method equals post. So this is why we imported request. This just allows us to see what method the web browser is using. And then we'll put here, we'll put all the data, we'll put all the code for if yeah, let me just remove this right now. We'll put all the code for if uh, once they enter the data later. But if um, it's not a post method, which means it's a get method, then we're going to return the render template of test.html. That means that if it's still in a get method, which means that the user has not entered their answer yet, then we want to show them the form so that they can enter it. Once they press submit, then the method will be post, and then it will run everything in that if statement. So what's the first thing we need to do? We need to create, a, we need to take the data entered in these two entries. If you remember, we created two variables called name and age. So that's that will come in use here. First thing we need to do is assign a Python variable, which I'm going to call name equals request dot form uh, name. So what we're doing here is we're taking this form that we just created, which is this test.html. We're taking this form and we're saying we're going into that form code and we're saying where is there a value where is there a variable name? And if you remember, I really shouldn't have closed that, should I? Uh, just open the brackets. If you remember, we had this right here. So the uh, Python is going to go into this HTML um, file and it'll say, where is that name thing? And it's going to find it right here. And it's going to say, whatever's in there, save it to the name in Python as well. And we're going to do the same thing for H. Okay, so now what we've done is we've just taken that data 
inputted by the user, and now we have it in our hands. We have it in Python, and now we can manipulate it how we want. So what I'm going to be using is a database. Now, if you don't know what databases are, they're essentially these like big tables, but they're very commonly used by programmers because they come in handy a lot. Um, but it's like a it's like a permanent table, so every time you reload your web page, it will not reset, it'll stay the same. Um, and this is a language called SQLite 3. If you don't know SQLite 3, you should probably go learn it first. It's not that difficult. Um, I'm just going to be using a few commands here, but if you don't know that, this might be a bit confusing. So we need to import the module SQLite 3. And first what we need to do is create our, <coughs> we need to create our um, d uh, database file. <coughs> so I'm going to call this form.db. Now sql3.connect, if there is a database called form.db, then it'll connect to that. If it if there is no form, if there is no database called form.db, then it'll make that. So in this case, we don't have one, so it'll just make it. Okay, now what we need to do is execute a command, which is performed by execute. And I'm going to say create table if not exists. Uh, let's just say form. That will be the name of the table. And I'm going to say in here, we're going to put... Here, let me just come here. We're going to say form, uh, there's going to be a name section, then there's going to be age section. Okay, so it, it, this is where, like, if you don't know SQL, then this might not make sense to you. So you should probably go learn basic SQL first. And then once you've made your, once you've made, uh, executed that statement, you have to say db.com. Uh, db underscore con dot commit. This will actually execute the statement. I don't know why we have to do this, but uh, you have to say this after you execute a statement like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a table if it doesn't exist. Um, and this table will be called form and it'll have two rows, name and age. Okay, now what I'm going to do is insert this data into the table. How am I going to do that? db underscore db underscore con that execute and I'm gonna say insert into form values and then I'm gonna put in um let's put our name and let's put in age There we go. Okay, so you may be wondering what all this like stuff is. The thing is, when you input data into the database, if it's not defined what the type is, then you have to put uh, these parentheses. I mean, you have to put uh, this apostrophe around it. Um. Uh, so when we're if we were to remove this right here then it would just be a name and we would get an error saying that there's no column called name and no column called age. So we need to take that name and age and we have to put it within apostrophes. So that's why I have an apostrophe here and then an apostrophe there, apostrophe here and apostrophe there. And that's why I use double quotation marks to mark my strings so it doesn't get confused with these apostrophes. Okay, now once we do that, we need to go dbcon.commit and that is, well, I guess that's it. Um, let's actually, let's actually make a new file. A uh, new, uh, I really need to fix this. Let's just say, uh, thanks dot h dot, no, just thanks. And then let me just change that here really quickly. N cd flask cd tem. And then move uh, thanks.txt, thanks.html. Okay, and in here, all I'm going to do is um, clear a doc type. Oops. 
and uh, okay. I'm just gonna create a body, and within here, I'm just gonna say thanks for your uh, answers. Okay, so that's just a quick thing. So once they fill it out and we perform all this stuff, uh, we're just gonna put this thanks.html so we're not, we don't seem too mean. So all this code, it, the user will not know. So the user, all they're doing is they're entering, they're uh, submitting their form, and then it'll say thanks. But what we're doing is we're taking what they entered and we're making a database and putting it into that database. Okay, so now we have this slash form thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another URL and I'm going to call this slash data. And the way we do that is just create another app.route. I'll put slash data. Uh, methods equals get post. So if, the, if anyone wants to see all the things that have been put into my form, they have to go to this super secret URL called slash data. So now we need to create a function. I'm just going to call it data because that's what the URL is. And I'm going to uh, use some basic uh, SQLite commands. Hopefully you understand what I'm doing here. Otherwise you should probably get to learning this. But I'm going to create a cursor and then I'm going to assign uh, I'm going to assign it to, let's see, rows equals c dot fetch all. And then I'm going to return a template called data.html, and I'm going to make that here in a second. So let me make that. Okay, let me just take this out. Yes. Uh, let's go here and let's create a new file. Next document data d cd and cd class cd temp and then move. Uh, what is it? Data dot txt and then data dot html. And let's just use some Jinja logic here and what I'm going to do is I'm taking doc type HTML, HTML, body and now I'm going to use some Jinja logic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything, I'm going to use that for statement again. So I'm going to within here put in parentheses and say for r, for uh, r in row and then I'm going to put h1 uh, r. So when we fetch all, like we did right here, it's going to come out as a list of lists. So what I'm doing is instead of putting it all together, I'm going to take every individual list from the list and print out that by itself. This will make it a little bit nicer to read. So that's how I'm doing it. OK, and we need to end this right now and and four okay uh oh yeah and cannot forget that we need to pass in that data rows equals rows make sure we have oh no it's we did not put an s there portante there we go okay um all right so now we have that done and I'll explain all this code once more once we uh, do it. Let's see if it works. Run module. And if you go to here, I'm going to say Billy, oh yeah, it's already here. 86. And so old man, thank you for your answers. I got a slash data. It did not work. Huh, okay, let's see. What? Did we do um, slash r? Do we properly render the template? 
return render template data to HTML. So this is rows equals so here. Let me figure this out. All right. So what I did was um, coming out here instead of saying c dot fetch all, I said c dot execute select all from form, and now it is working just fine. Okay, I'm gonna just delete that right now or take it out. So if I put it, come in here to form and I say test testing, I'm gonna say my age is. 21 and we go to data you'll see it comes up here as testing and 21 that's pretty nice um, now let me go back and explain all the code because you might have gotten lost let me just make everything a bit smaller and see a little bit better okay so um, we're in f well hopefully you understand all this part uh, so what we're doing here is we're creating a URL at form and we're having two methods, get and post. The default method for any web browser is get, but we want to use post because we're having a form and we want to retrieve the data and put it into the form. So we're checking if the user has submitted their form. If they have, then the web page method will be post. In that case, we're going to retrieve the answers that they put. We're going to create a table we're going to insert the data that they entered into the table and then we're just going to say thanks and then if they haven't submitted their form yet then we're going to give them the form right here and then we're creating a new website or a new URL slash data and here we're taking that form that we just created up here and we're taking everything from that form and we're putting it all out in a nice format for uh, uh, in this um, thing, so by to do that we use Jinja logic, which is like this, and for R in row in rows or something like that, and then we printed out R for everything. Um, so yeah, that was some um, actually quite a bit of flask right there. Uh, I hope you understood quite a bit. I hope you learned quite a bit. If you didn't understand, then go back and, uh, you know, rewind the video and look at everything. If you still don't understand it, then you can research it yourself, how to do all this stuff. And I recommend learning this SQL language and also um, HTML and CSS, if you can. But we're actually not going to be using too much CSS ourselves. So if I recommend just learning some HTML before we proceed with this tutorial series. So I hope you enjoyed something. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. And thanks.